Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to examine with you the six shades of flex time. That is the six algorithms you have available to you to bend and stretch the timing of a performance. Now flex time is Logic's proprietary system for stretching or shrinking a performance's timing. Imagine you're a bass player. You've played a performance, you're quite happy with it, but you know, it's a little loose around the edges. You wish it locked in more with the click or the drums. Now you could record take after take after take, try to get that best take or comp one together, or you could just use flex time. Where flex time, you can literally pick out the notes or the hits and move them around and lock them in with another instrument or the grid. Or say you're a vocalist, you sang a performance, you're pretty happy, but this one note, man, you wish it would have been longer. Or this note, you wish it was a little shorter. Well, that's easy. You literally can compress a note so it's shorter in time or elongate a note so it's much longer in time. So this is just a brief overview of flex time, what you have available to you, and what the best algorithm is for a particular instrument. First, let's open flex time. Using Command F, you immediately know that flex time is enabled when this icon right here is highlighted in blue. It looks like an audio region that's been twisted around. You also know if a particular track has flex enabled if that same icon is in the track header for that track. So you can see here, most of my tracks are flex enabled, but my vocal tracks down here, that icon is grayed out. We haven't enabled flex time and thus Logic has not analyzed these audio regions. But you can see here that it has analyzed these particular audio regions. You can see that's picked out all the kick hits, everything along the overheads. If we look at the bass, you can see that's picked out transients and notes. These are what are called transient markers. Logic has analyzed the audio region when we selected a particular algorithm, and now we're able to bend and stretch the timing of our performance just by grabbing these particular transient markers. And then in the track header here, we have a drop down menu, and we click on it, and there are plenty of options for us to manipulate the timing of these tracks. The first one is flex pitch, and there's actually seven algorithms, but flex pitch, in my opinion, is, you know, that deserves its own set of blog posts and videos, so we're not going to dig into that right now. Second up is Logic's attempt at determining what the best option is for editing this particular track. I have a bass DI highlighted, and Logic is determined on its own, just based on analyzing, that you want to use polyphonic. Now, I'm going to go through all these options because it turns out that polyphonic is not what I want to go for with a bass DI. Instead, I want to use monophonic, which is our first option that we can pick manually. Monophonic is a time stretching algorithm specifically for instruments and tracks that are one voice or one instrument at a time. For example, a bass. Most of the time, a bass player is going to play one note at a time. Vocalists, I mean, unless the vocalist is out of this world, most likely singing one note at a time, one voice at a time. So monophonic is perfect for this application. If you look on any forum, a lot of folks have a hard time with flex time. And I'm telling you 90% of the reason is because they pick the wrong algorithm for their editing. So they pick monophonic when they're trying to edit drums and then their drums sound terrible. You know, I, you know, of course, Logic may have a glitch or two, but that's like a lot of the reason. So moving forward, slicing. Slicing is specifically for editing drums. It's actually Logic's answer to a very famous facility in Pro Tools called Beat Detective. Now, Beat Detective doesn't use time stretching. Instead, Beat Detective analyzes a drum performance, and then it slices up at every transient, and then it moves the regions around based on the grid. And then it backfills the region, and then it adds a fade, which is, you know, is awesome. It takes a little in no time, but you also have to double check every edit because there could be pops, clicks, etc. So Logic instead uses slicing, which uses time compression, but there's no slicing up 
There's no fades. Actually, there's both. It just does it automatically for you. For example, if I take this kick hit and I drag this over here, you can see that there is a slice because slicing doesn't actually adjust the timing. It adjusts the timing, but it doesn't compress or expand the audio necessarily. It's trying to preserve each drum hit in relation to the other drum hits that you're moving around and editing. So slicing is really for multi-mic drums, percussion, etc. Then we have rhythmic. Often folks like to pick rhythmic for their drum editing, but slicing is really intended for that case. Though you might have great success with rhythmic. Rhythmic is for instruments such as acoustic guitars, keys, anything with a lot of rhythmic activity, a lot of bounce. Polyphonic is the opposite of monophonic, where monophonic is one voice or one instrument at a time. Polyphonic is many voices, many instruments at a time. For example, a choir, a whole mix, you know, some sort of accompaniment between multiple instruments. There's a lot of complexity in all the tone and activity when there's many voices involved. So it needs a very complex algorithm to adjust those. Then we have two creative timing options, speed which either slows down or speeds up a section, and it also pitches down or pitches up depending in which direction you go, and tempo foam, which is sort of a tape delay sort of stretching. It's mechanical, has a lot of graininess. So let's start walking through some of these. So I have a bass track here, clearly, and when I click on one of these particular transient markers, a new marker emerges, and that's called a flex marker. So I'm gonna line this flex marker up with this right here, and then I'm gonna stretch this note way out, and we'll start with monophonic. Let's solo this bass, and let's take a listen to the bass originally. Okay, sounds pretty good. I'm gonna take this note here, stretch it way out. Okay, monophonic. Okay, so immediately we can tell that it stretched it out quite a bit and it preserves the integrity of the bass actually quite well. Then we can go to slicing, and you can immediately see here, there's a huge gap between the first note and the second note. And again, that's because slicing is intending to preserve the integrity of separate hits, so it's trying not to compress or expand the hit by too much. Of course, if I bump this up like this, it's gonna have to do some sort of compression, but it's really trying its best to retain the integrity of drum hits. So if I go way out, that drum hit, you know, that's how long that drum hit played. So it's not going to stretch to the next note. That's why monophonic is best for something like a bass. Okay, rhythmic. I'm going to stretch this way out. Take a listen. And you can hear right there that rhythmic is introducing like a bouncing sensation for more rhythmic instruments. Polyphonic. And though that sounds pretty cool, polyphonic is actually trying to extract or determine separate notes, separate sounds from the single bass note. So it's actually kind of like separating tones. Take a listen again. Instead, go back to monophonic. And monophonic treats it like a single tone instead of many which is why it's more apt for bass. Now let's go to speed, which is pretty awesome. Let's go in the other direction. I'll do that. So the pitching actually changes with the speed. And then we have tempo phone. And you can actually adjust more parameters within the region inspector here. If you don't see the region inspector, just use key command I. Let's reduce the grain size here, which is pretty cool. So again, for slicing, I just wanna touch on that a little bit. I have a post all about drum editing with flex time on the blog, but for drum editing specifically, you wanna make sure to group your drums together. So I have overheads, a kick and a snare in this case. Crazy important that I group these instruments together. There's a field right between the output here in the mixer and automation stages. I'm gonna select a new group. 
I'm going to name this group drum. I'm going to open up the settings within the groups. I want to make sure to click editing selection and quantize locked audio. And this makes sure that when I edit these drums and I move this kick hit over here, the same thing occurs across all the tracks in that group. Because all these mics recorded the same instrument at the same time, there's a delicate relationship. So you want to make sure that any edit you commit on the drums or any multi-mic instrument is repeated across all the tracks. So I hope that was helpful to you. As always, if it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the blog itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new posts, new videos, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.